have on uh, skunk about uh, five degrees off the uh, port bow. Come left, steer course 190. This is the United States Navy. On watch. Around the world. Night and day. Every day. Always ready. Freedom of the seas is not a gift, nor is it built into any international bill of rights. Recent world events have brought our Navy into sharp focus. Our nation's investment in the fleet has paid multiple dividends for peace. Ensuring the world's free use of international waters and airspace, apprehending the Achille Loro hijackers, and contributing significantly to a ceasefire in the Persian Gulf. These are just some results of a committed Navy operating from a position of strength. Our Navy is built around 15 carrier battle groups. The most sophisticated surface ships, submarines, aircraft, and weapon systems in the world. And most importantly, the best trained and dedicated young men and women this nation has to offer. That's the great capability of the Navy, the ability to respond, go to anywhere, almost anywhere in the world on a moment's notice, stay there, do the mission, and then come back home when the mission's over. It's the sailors who make this global commitment possible. And they do so at no small cost to themselves and their loved ones who await their return. They've been going to sea for centuries, but long separations haven't gotten any easier. Birthdays, graduations, and anniversaries will come and go before these families get together again. The 570 ships in our Navy carry some of the most sophisticated technology known to man. Our Aegis cruisers are one example. Over the past six years since Aegis first put to sea, Reports from the fleet in every theater of operations have been unanimous. The Aegis cruiser has been judged to be the most versatile, powerful, reliable, and cost-efficient surface combatant in the world today. These ships are simply revolutionizing battle force warfare in every mission area. And that tradition will be carried on into the future with the Arleigh Burke DDG-51 class destroyer. The beauty of Aegis is, is that the system can provide so much information on, on the environment, on contacts around you. So you got a surface picture and an air picture available to you that's unsurpassing anything that I've ever seen. Our nuclear-powered submarines are the finest in the world. The Navy depends on undersea superiority to maintain the peace. It's a superiority we cannot afford to take for granted. On the surface, the legendary battleships provide brand new capabilities. Tomahawk cruise missiles can threaten enemy targets deep behind their lines, while the ageless 16-inch guns continue to command respect. Navy capabilities have been broadened by the introduction of the USS Avenger. This class of mine countermeasure ships significantly enhances our ability to detect and destroy enemy mines. Mine detection is among the many jobs performed by Navy SEALs, a highly specialized group trained in underwater demolition and other skills. Trained to wage war above and below water, as well as on land, SEALs rely on stealth, surprise, and precision in accomplishing their mission. The challenge our Navy faces worldwide isn't static. To ensure Navy men and women retain the means to deter or defeat adversaries requires a ceaseless and intensive scientific effort. The Navy remains on the cutting edge of scientific research. From laser-guided weaponry to satellite communications, today's Navy is moving rapidly into the 21st century. The Navy is the major consumer of space-collected data 
using 85% of all satellite information provided by the armed forces, including communication, navigation, and early warning intelligence. Navy scientists study more than weapons. Our interest in oceanographic research is not surprising. After all, the sea is our home. Underwater exploration and research using deep submergence vehicles like Trieste and Alvin help us to better understand that environment. Just one side benefit of this research was discovering wreckage from the cruise ship Titanic. Nothing is more serious than a fire at sea, but fighting them is easier with a new infrared thermal imaging device. By quickly locating fires, even behind bulkheads, Navy firefighters suffer less from smoke, heat, and toxic fumes. A commanding officer's battle station used to be on the bridge, where he could direct and supervise gun crews and helmsmen. The modern sea battle is fought from combat information centers deep within the ship. Navy ships of the future will be propelled by electric motors. Scientific breakthroughs involving superconductivity may result in engines which are dramatically smaller and more efficient. The needed rebuilding of our Navy has not been without cost. Freedom seldom is. At what cost comes liberty? As you take to the seas, you remind us that America is still the beacon of hope, still a light upon all nations. And when you sail, you inspire us. Our Navy is prepared to conduct prompt and sustained combat operations at sea in support of U.S. interests. That is our mission. A strong Navy is essential to the defense of this maritime nation and the maritime alliance on which our security must ultimately depend. The improvements made during the past decade to keep our Navy the best in the world could easily be allowed to slip away. Since the dawn of the nuclear age, deterrence has been the cornerstone of American policy. That deterrence must be based on capability and resolve to inflict unacceptable damage upon any aggressor who threatens legitimate U.S. interests. The U.S. Navy has played a leading role in recent years in delivering that message to non-believers. When terrorists' fingerprints are found on international incidents, the Navy makes believers out of those who would support such terror. Navy ships like the Aegis cruiser Yorktown have played a vital role in the battle against terrorism. It was Yorktown that tracked the aircraft carrying the Achille Loro terrorists from Egypt, passing detailed pictures of the plane's movements to every U.S. ship and warplane in the Mediterranean. And it was Navy aircraft that convinced the terrorists to land in Sicily, where they were taken into custody. But there is another side of the Navy. The hospital ship Mercy deployed to the Philippines for four months, treating nearly a thousand patients every day. The Navy medical care provided to patients in seven Philippine ports included internal medicine, orthopedics, and dentistry. When you actually see the work that, that you've done, it really makes you feel good. In 1986, international cooperation extended all the way to the People's Republic of China. The visit of three U.S. Navy ships capped a 15-year effort to re-establish Navy-to-Navy relations. 1,000 U.S. sailors sampled Chinese culture and established lasting friendships. Goodwill and friendship result from sailors' voluntary community support during routine port visits abroad. Command assistance to a community in support of improved international relations is limited only by time, imagination, and resources. Our Navy is also engaged in the nation's war on drugs. Navy ships and planes routinely assist the Coast Guard, Customs, and Drug Enforcement agents in tracking drug-running aircraft and boats. Coast Guard detachments on board Navy ships arrest smugglers and seize their contraband. Integrity, personal honor, commitment to excellence. These are key values in the Navy, and our people reflect them. 
our Navy men and women are the most intelligent, best trained and dedicated sailors ever to don uniforms. Youth and dedication are common denominators in today's Navy. It was a young crew manning the USS Samuel B. Roberts when that ship struck a mine in the Persian Gulf in April of 1988. The explosion temporarily crippled the frigate, but not the men on board. In the face of adversity, the captain of the Roberts summed it up best. Uh, the story that has unfolded here, I believe, in the last uh, 30 hours has been a story of a ship that refused to die, of a crew that is uh, well-trained and well-disciplined, that has tremendous pride and tremendous spirit. These key elements shown by the crew of the Roberts are representative of all those who serve throughout our Navy. Such ordeals strengthen the fiber binding our Navy family together. I'm very proud of the men on this ship tonight and what we've been through. And uh, I think they're very proud of themselves and they're proud of their Navy. The men and women of the Navy accept hard work and dangerous conditions as a way of life because they know they have the full support of their families and friends and the deep respect and appreciation of a grateful nation they serve. If tomorrow all the things were gone, I'd work for all my life, and I had to start again, just my children and my wife. Thank my lucky stars to be living here today, because the flag still stands for freedom, and they can't take that away. I'm proud to be an American Where at least I know I'm free And I won't forget the men who died Who gave that right to me And I gladly stand up next to you And defend her still today Cause there ain't no doubt I love this land God bless the USA to be an American where at least I know I'm free and I won't forget the men who died who gave that right to me and I gladly stand up next to you and defend her still today cause there ain't no doubt I love this land God bless the U.S.